pray for them while they come.
last verse, there's a line that says, Your soul you're satisfied. And I can stand up here and say it. My soul is truly satisfied. Yeah, amen. I don't want for anything outside amen. of him. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. back in the Lord's house tonight. Thank you yes. so much for your kindness uh, that you have shown to me and, uh, and for the church.
church. I feel right at home here. If it wasn't so far to drive and I could be in two places at once, uh, I'd probably be here in that RBT at the, at the same time. But I can't hardly, I can't hardly be in two places at once. In fact, it's all I do is be in one place at once. Hey. That, that's a full-time job for me. But it's good to be in the Lord's house and thankful. Has already been stated what the Lord did for us in the evening service last night. Amen. In spite of us, how the Lord give us a little breath of fresh air, yes, a little a little help. I tell you, we need some help in our bondage, don't we? Amen. A, little, a little reviving in our bondage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What the one of the minor prophets made the statement about. And uh, I tell you, if there's ever a day that you need to be a worshiper, <coughs> it's in this hour. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. The devil's after you worship because he yeah. knows if he can get your worship, everything else will be easy. Right. Right. Sir, right. He knows everything else will crumble if he can get your worship. Right. He can get yes, your sir. walk. Right. He can get your uh, uh, your warfare. Right. He can get everything about you if he can get your worship. Mm. And that's what he's after. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No yeah. doubt about it. In most churches, it's very evident that he's got that. They've lost that. They, they, it's evident that there's no worship in the song service, yeah, no Lord worship uh, in the preaching of the Word of God, no worship privately. Oh, that's how you can tell. That's the first place to look. Yeah. Is if, if the devil's after your worship and he's being successful, it's going to show up when nobody's around. Yes, that's right. It's going to show up in your prayer time. It's going to yes, show sir. up if you even have a prayer time. It's going to show up in your devotion time. Amen. And I believe there's a great need. It's a, there's always a great need, but none greater than now to have an intimacy with the Lord. Yeah. That's what's going to stabilize you. Yeah. That's what's going to help you through the battle right. is to have that in your life. Right. Amen. Right. That's right. Yes, sir. right. Uh, the reason Egypt didn't do Moses in was because of what happened to him up on the mountain. Yeah. On the back side of the desert. What about that? He had an experience with God that was greater than any threat Amen. that could come from Pharaoh. Yeah. Hey. Right. Amen. Hey. Your spirituality is your responsibility. I say that often. Yes, sir. But I want to tell you, your spirituality is your survival. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. You're going to make it. And I'm talking about make it with victory. I'm not talking about making it to heaven. That, I said that last night. That's the work of Jesus. Yeah, right. That has everything to do with my salvation. Yeah, if I'm saved, I've already made it. Right. It's not that I'm going to make it. I've already made it. Yeah, That's exactly right. John right. done wrote the last book of the Bible and said that he didn't saw me over there. Yeah. Right. He didn't saw a number which no man can number, and I'm in there somewhere. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm as sure for theirs if I'm already there. As far as God's covenant is concerned, I am right. already there. Amen. Amen. I can shout about already being in heaven. Amen. What kind of life did God give you when he saved you? Right. Yeah. Somebody yeah. help me with that. You said, what? Eternal. Eternal life. That was when you got saved. That very moment, God yeah. gave you what kind of life? Eternal, Eternal life. life. Yeah. Amen. That means the life you're going to have 10 trillion years from tonight, yes, he gave to you that night, yeah. that yeah. moment yeah. of your new yeah. birth. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So if I've already got heaven's life, yeah. then why can't I enjoy it now? Right. Hey. Ain't going to be nobody sad moping around on Hallelujah Boulevard. Yeah, right. And nobody up there going to be, uh, you know, with a poochy lip. Yeah. Nobody up there. Listen, do you understand tonight that not one person in heaven is envious of anybody on earth. That's right. Right. Amen. There's not yes. one person in heaven, Amen. not one, looking God. over the balance of heaven and saying, man, I wish I had their money and I drove that car. Man, I wish I lived in that right. house. Right. I wish yeah. I wore those clothes. Right. I wish I... No, 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 no. Yeah. no they God. wouldn't trade places with the biggest, Amen. the baddest, the best. He right. probably wouldn't trade places with none of them. Uh, yeah. right. They're not yeah. envious of us. If right. anybody ought to be envious, it ought to be us. Envious of them. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Amen. Yeah. Hey. But now don't you ever forget this. Everybody in hell's want now. Yeah. Everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody is want now. Amen. Amen. Nobody in heaven's want now, but everybody in hell's want now. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Don't let that sink in. Yes, sir. Hey. There's only a way to avoid that awful place. 
and has to be born again. Yeah. Yeah. Not a church member. Right. Not, not doing good, straightening up, right. turning over new leaves. Amen. New Year's resolutions, reformation, right. Right. do better. Right. That's not what's going to get you there. Right. Right. That's not what's going to get you there. Yeah. Right. I was preaching not long ago in our church. Lord, give me something that just absolutely astounded me. If salvation could come, how many, most, a lot of your works based teaching, preaching, religions, they, they would hold to the fact that if you, if I hear me make this statement, how many believes that a perfect life would get you to heaven? Well, they'd be, oh, yeah, well, sure, a perfect life. Of course, to follow up with that, there's no hope of that. There's no hope of a perfect life. But if you could, Brother Creed, you still couldn't go to heaven. Right. You said, Preacher, what are you talking about? Yeah. If we could, here it is. If we could be saved by a perfect life, then Jesus didn't have to die. Amen. All he had to done was come here right. from birth to the end, live a perfect life, and he did. Right. Right. But that wasn't good enough. Right. He had to die. Yeah. And that wasn't good enough. He didn't just have to, have to live a perfect life. That qualified him to be both the priest yeah. and the sacrifice. Yeah. 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 Amen. But he had to die because that was the demands of the law. Yeah. The law said the wages of sin is death. So he had to die. He not only had to live a perfect life, but he had to die. Right. Yeah. And that still wouldn't have been enough to save us. Yeah. Right. right. Amen. He had to be. A, he had to rise again the Amen. third day. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're saved by His life. Right. Amen. His resurrected life. He's a living Savior. Right. Yes. So next time somebody talks about, man, I'm on, I'm, I'm straightening up and I'm doing good. Yeah. All that. Listen. Bring that. Throw that one off. Yeah. What if Jesus just lived a perfect life? Would that have saved you? No. Well, then your perfect life surely won't save you. Yeah. If his perfect life alone, alone won't save you, yours definitely won't. Amen. 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 You, don't have, you don't have no hope of that. Yeah, right. Uh, you don't have no hope of that. Yes, if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. Right. 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 That's right. So I'm glad it's not in a perfect life. Hey. My perfect life, anyway. Right. Glad it's not in my perfect life. Yeah. It's not in my works. It's not in my deeds of righteousness. It's not in my straightening up. Right. It's not me joining the church, being right. baptized. Amen. None of those things. <laughs> I'm saved and through Christ alone. Right. Amen. Amen. Period. Right. Amen. 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 I get to go to heaven because of Jesus. Amen. That's it. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Amen. There won't be nobody in heaven doing this number. Right. Right. Nobody in heaven's going to be saying, hey, Jesus, we did it, didn't we? Yeah. You did your part, I did mine. No. Right. He did it all. Yes, sir. Amen. He paid it all. Amen. 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 And he did that not for his friends. He did that for enemies. Yes, he did that for you and me that was right. bent against him in depravity and sin. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. But God committeth his love toward yeah. us in that while we were yet Amen. sinners. Yes, sir. Christ died. Amen. Amen. We can get a hold of that tonight. We'd probably hear some shouting going Amen. on. Amen. Yes, look around and it would be you doing it. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. right. I'm glad to be saved tonight. I'm Amen. glad I know who it is that's saved. Amen. Amen. That's right. God deliver us from this performance-based spirituality. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I'm sick of it. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a defeated life, isn't it? Right. That's yes, that performance-based. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God help us. Right. It's good to be here tonight. I'm thankful. Amen. For what he's done, what he's going to do. The best is yet to come. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Well, that old songwriter had it right when they pinned that old hymn down. My hope is built on nothing less. Yes, sir. Jesus' blood. Hey. Hey. Amen. Amen. Hey. Hey. I like it. Hey. I embrace that. Yes, hey. 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 Praise the Lord. Hey. All right. Well, I want to ask you to turn tonight with me to the book of Acts, chapter 28. Acts, chapter Number 28, we're praying this morning, and the Lord impressed our heart in this passage of Scripture in Acts chapter number 28. We 
start reading in verse number 1. The Bible said, And when they were escaped, and of course we, if you're familiar with your, uh, your Bible, chapter 27 deals with the, the great storm that the, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, was on board the ship with 276 others and, and uh, how it looked like they were going under for sure. And, and Paul prayed and God told him that all of those that are with you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to give them to you. I believe yeah. that simply means that he's, that he's gonna save them, mm -hmm. not just save them from the storm and save them from death. I believe <laughs> God said He's gonna give them to Paul, in that He's gonna be able to win every one of them right. to Christ. Yes. Right. The Lord. Had He not prayed, this is another message that I preach to the church. But I want to ask you: Had not Paul went, went along and got along in a, in a period of long abstinence, as he called it, mm -hmm. and he prayed? Had he not done that, because that's when God told him, said, Paul, I'll give you all of them. What if he had to pray? Right. Chances are those 276 people not would have just only died in the storm, but they would have died and went to hell. Yeah, right. It does matter if you pray. Yeah. Yeah. It does matter yeah. if you pray. There's right. nothing ever going to be a substitute for praying. Right. Right. Mark that down. You ought to write that down in your heart and mind. There's never going to be a substitute for prayer. Yeah. This church, our church, any church will never rise above its prayer. Right. Paul, before it ever said any word about Paul preaching, said he prayed. Yeah. When Ananias showed up in his house, amen, and, 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 he, was, and he was blind, he couldn't see. Guess what the Bible said? The holy prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Paul did yeah. more through his praying than he did his preaching. Yeah. And there are a lot of his prayers even recorded through his church epistles that the Lord used him to write. I wonder if God were to uh, write down our praying, I wonder how many chapters there were. Oh, oh, right. I, wonder, I wonder if somebody could even write a track on it, much less a book. Right. I'm not advocating this author altogether, but I am telling you that author Pink wrote a book that thick just on the prayers of the Apostle Paul. Mm. Wow. Amen. Yeah. But we've got it in our mind. I'm not really preaching on that tonight, but we've got it seemingly in our mind that prayer is just something that maybe the preacher does yeah. or a few right. other choice pre uh, saints in the house of God does. Oh, my and I want to tell you, if you're old enough to be saved, you're old enough to be praying. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right. There is no substitute for praying. Amen. This church, where it goes from here, what happens after tonight, all of that can be directly linked to whether or not this church has a spirit of prayer. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. Verse number two, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. That is, they showed us a lot of kindness is what that implies. Yeah. For they kindled a fire. Know that statement, they kindled a fire. The word kindled would give indication that this is the start of the fire. They started the fire. For they kindled a fire and received us every one, every one who? Paul and the 276 that just swam and some on broken pieces yep. and they just come out of the chilly waters of that sea. And no doubt many of them were very close to hypothermia <coughs> because even in this time, I don't know the difference between February here and February over there. I don't know the difference. Right. But if it's winter time, then uh, certainly that would be cold. And probably some of them hop, uh, on the verge of hypothermia and death even. So the kindled of fire received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. So we don't know what the temperature range was, but Paul said it was raining yeah. and it was cold. How many has been wet in the rain before? Yeah. It could be almost in the, in the middle of summer and you get good and drenched in the rain. Brother, I'm going to tell you, it's going to pull your body temperature down and you're going to be one miserable person. Yeah. Yeah. He said because of the rain and because of the cold. Now keep this in mind now. Evidently, that's the reason they kindled the fire. 
in verse number two, it said that for they kindled a fire and and received us every one. Why? Because of the present rain and because of the cold. So that tells me there, that was the very reason why the barbarous people kindled the fire. Right. They saw some people that definitely needed the benefits of a fire. Yeah, right. yeah. Does the church need to be on fire? Amen. Does the church need to have some fire? Yeah. Can, we, can we see people out there that's just endured a storm and they come through a storm and they're miserable. In fact, it's a miracle that they're even still yet alive. Or could I put it this way? It's a miracle that they're still even coming to church. It's a miracle that their marriage is still together. It's a miracle that the children are still at, the, at home. It's a miracle. Looking at what they've been through. What do they need? They need to be able to come somewhere where there's a fire. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when Paul, verse number three, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, isn't that amazing? That when Paul showed up on this island, the first thing that caught his attention was the fire. He wasn't caught up with the governor, the chief, a man as listed in verse 7 of the island, which was like the governor of the island, he wasn't worried about who the big dog was. He was concerned about himself and 276 others that was very close to freezing to death. Yeah. Right. He was interested in fire. Yeah. And he wasn't just interested, well, I'll, I'll deal with that in a moment. I, I was about to go, help us Lord. And when people, or when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. Whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Listen, all of that crowd is not dead. All of that crowd that I just read right there about is not dead. They belong to a lot of Baptist churches. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If something bad happens to you, yep, yeah, I knew it, I knew yeah. it, yeah. I've been expecting that. <laughs> I knew they were they wasn't something, they were not they were they could, they're hiding something. I knew it. Yeah. There's not a reason like that behind every negative thing that happens in your life. Right. Right. But how quick are we to, to look at a, a, a situation and say, well, I wonder what they've been doing. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe they've been doing what's right. Amen. Paul has just come through the worst storm and recorded in the New right. Testament. And you don't find a man living no more clean and holy than the Apostle Paul. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. It might not be a sign that something that you're doing something wrong. It might be a sign you're doing something right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Say man right there. Yes, and so in Luke, let's read on. And uh, the Bible said there, verse number five, and he shook off the beast into the fire. So we have again the reference to the fire. And felt no harm. How did they look? That's the barbarous people. And when they look, he, when he should have, boy, I got that in quotation marks right there. Yep. When he should have fallen and uh, or swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, when he should have, Amen. when if the natural would have carried itself out, yeah. that, that's what would the results of it. Yeah. Right. Or we saw that snake bite several others and, and this is the normal course of action. He should have been swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. Yeah. Um, Boy, I'm glad God's bigger than the statistics. I'm yeah, glad God yeah. is bigger than the natural. I'm glad God amen. is bigger than the, all the rest. I'm glad right. God is able. Amen. Amen. When he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly, and I got these in quotes, but after. Mm -hmm. When he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after. Mm -hmm. 
They kept watching and looking and watching and looking and waiting and expecting and looking and expecting. But guess what? He never even he never even uh, uh, got swollen from the bite of the snake. He never he never fell down dead. Of course, suddenly I like this. Verse number five said he didn't even feel no harm. Yeah, that's right. Hey, man. He didn't even complain. He didn't murmur. He didn't even say, ouch. I don't know what kind of snake it was, but the Bible called the snake a beast. I don't know. I didn't know snakes were beasts, but this one must be bad enough. It was called a beast. Yeah. Ain't no telling how long it was. No telling how big it was. It may have had a head on as big as a watermelon. Who knows? But if you, hey man, let me read on here. But after they had looked a great while, I could see them all staring, total silence, just waiting. Yeah, we got in there. We know the. We know that this man has escaped the sea. He done something wrong, but the sea didn't get him. But this snake's gonna get him. And after they had what looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind. Keep in mind, these are barbarous people. That is, that's not just describing how they live and where they live and their culture. That's, saying ever, that's tell, testifying that they were lost people. Right. They were unsaved people. Right. Hey. Right. Right. Well, you're talking about a mission message right there, Brother Chris. Amen. What is needed in missions when you're trying to win people to God? There needs to be the fire. Amen. The fire of missions. I've never preached on that, but I'm subject to it any time. But not tonight. Thank God. So they saw no harm and said that he was a God. And then, of course, it talks about in the same quarters were, uh, were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days uh, courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered and prayed. Thank God for Paul maintaining his prayer life Amen. even in the midst of the previous yes. chapter in the storm right. and now even through the trials that, that is in chapter 28 Paul still uh, was a praying man. Amen. A lot can be told about you and a lot can be told about me but what stops you from praying. Yes, sir. Right. Say amen. Yes, sir. Well, that's good stuff right there. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. And he prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. And when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. Amen. Who also honored us with many honors. And when he and when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. And of course, he said, after the three months, we departed in a ship to Alexandria. So he was there on that island. For three months. Notice if you will. Back in verse number two. The Bible makes reference to the kindling of the fire. The Bible also talks about the fire again in verse number five. And he shook off the beast into the fire. And so there's, there's mention here of the fire. But this is the part I want to deal with tonight. On this Friday night. The last night of, of the revival effort. It surely should not be the last night of the revival. Right. And I want to comment on that just a minute. God never moves with just the moment in mind. God never, you'll never convince me that God has arranged this week of meetings. And for the preaching and the singing and everything that's went on in these five nights. For it to end tonight. I'm talking about the results of it and what God has done. But God has maybe started something, but listen, you need to build on it. Yeah, the natural course of fire is to do what? The natural course of fire is to go out. Yeah. Amen. Right. But if you'll feed it yeah. and you'll fed it, yeah. it cannot go out. Right. Right. It right. will not go out. Amen. Amen. And I want you to notice here that Paul <laughs> gathered 
a bundle of sticks in verse number 3. Do you notice that? Now, the, I want you to note this. He wasn't starting the fire. Right. Right. The apostle Paul, when he was gathering that bundle of sticks, he wasn't starting the fire. Right. Right. Now, watch this right here. The apostle Paul, when he was gathering the bundle of sticks, he wasn't sustaining the fire. Yeah. Right. He wasn't interested in just sustaining or maintaining the fire. Right. Because preacher, it was evident when he showed up. He knew that he had 276. It's kind of hard for 276 to get around one little fire. Right. And when Paul and them showed up, the fire had just been started. Yeah. The fire, when the barbarous people saw them coming, they recognized they were hurting. They recognized that they needed help. They needed, amen, some attention. Yes. Yeah. So they kindled the fire. They started the fire. A lot of churches need to get that part right. right. A lot right. of churches need a fire started. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Paul gathered immediately. Get that picture now. Mm -hmm. he's, he's coming in. He's got 270 people, 76 people, and they're all in bad shape. Yeah. And the first thing he did was he noticed the fire, and he noticed something about the fire that stirred in him to be laboring. I need to start picking up sticks. And he started picking up sticks to put it on the fire. Keep in mind, he didn't start the fire. He's not gathering sticks to sustain the fire. Mm -hmm. Then what was he doing? He was gathering the sticks to supersize yeah. the fire. Hey, yeah, man. Man. Yes, wow. When he saw the fire, he recognized it's not big enough. Yeah, right. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. The fire that's needed in this hour, this hour of coldness, oh, yeah. this hour of storm yeah. after storm after storm, yeah. and this hour of trial oh. after trial after trial, listen, a little fire won't do. Yeah. 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 And most certainly no fire will work. Right. Yeah. Right. Most churches don't have any fire. Right. And as a result of that, many of them, instead of backing up and saying, why do we not have any fire from God who is a consuming fire? Yes, why do we not have that? They've introduced wildfire. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And I want to tell you, friend, yeah. no fire, that is not the will of God. Right. Right. Yeah. Deliver me from this dead church Hey, hey, deliver hey, me hey. from that. Yeah. I don't have to settle for it. Right. I don't have to settle for just going to church and going through the mechanical oh, motions. Hey. I don't have to settle for going to church and talk about how it used to be right. and the fires of God yeah. that used to burn and what yeah. Mama said and Daddy said right. and Grandma said and, and the book I read about revival right. and what it said. I don't have to settle. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I'm afraid a lot of churches are settling. Yes, sir. They're yes. settling for no fire. Well, and they're explaining it away. And they're excusing. Well, preacher, I mean, after all, look at the circumstances that our country's in. And look at all the mandates. And look at all the restrictions. And look at what the Democrats are doing. And look at what the Republicans are not doing. And, and look at this. And look at what China's doing. And Russia's doing. And Ukraine's doing. And, and Iraq's doing. And they talk themselves into believing that this is a day that we just are enduring to the end. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm going to make a statement right here to probably raise some of your eyebrows. But I want to tell you this is the greatest day that I've ever seen for revival. That's yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Preacher, that sounded, that, that's, yeah. that was so spiritual it didn't even sound true, did it? <laughs> hey. Preacher, you mean to tell me that the day we're living in you not read the headlines and, and, and listen to the news and all of that, and you just made the statement that this is the greatest day of revival that I've ever seen in the 40 years that I've been saved. That's exactly what I said, and I didn't stutter saying it. 
You say, how in the world do you get that, preacher? Where do you get that at? Revival has never come in days of prosperity. Jesus. Revival never has come, preacher, when everything was smooth. Yeah. When everything was wonderful. Revival has come when our backs are against the wall. Yes. Revival has come when people got hungry to see God's yes. face right. because they realized he's the only hope and the only answer. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. there's yes. ever a day that Mission Hill needs to be on fire for the oh, Lord. Yes. I want to tell you, the word will get out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey. Oh, yes, there's people right. everywhere getting sick of dead church service. Right. Right. And right. preachers getting up and whining and complaining for 30 minutes. Come on. Preaching right. The word of God yeah. and when people need to hear a word from yeah. God. Yes, sir. Yeah. They're sitting sick and tired of that. Yeah. Right. They need to hear and they will hear. Yeah. 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 There's a fire here at Mission Hill. Yeah. Not wildfire, right. but real fire. Yeah. The word will get out and people will start coming from far and wide. Yes, right. sir. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you, preach. Listen, we've uh -huh. got people that drive an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes to church one way. Hey. I said, I can't believe you're doing that. They said, Well, preacher, have you forgot what your own personal motto for your church is? I said, Yeah, I see. We, I forgot that. Hey. Church alive is worth a drive. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. Hey. Hey. The devil's after our fire. Right. He don't care if you assemble, if it's no more meaningful than the cults right. through a, that assemble, yeah. the Muslims that assemble, right. the, the JWs that assemble, right. yeah. that assemble, the Mormons that assemble, yeah. the, amen, or any other false religion. He doesn't right. care right. if you got a Baptist on your sign. Right. He doesn't care if you got a King James Bible in your lap. As long as there is no I say it again, Paul wasn't starting fire. Paul wasn't sustaining the fire. Yes, sir. To sustain the fire, meaning we're just trying to keep it where it is. We're just trying to keep it from getting less than what it is. But that wasn't pa what Paul was doing. Paul realized because he was always conscious. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Paul was conscious of the need. Yes, sir. Right. Right. A little fire is not going to help this big crowd. Amen. A little crowd, a little fire is not going to help the, the 276 people that are in need. Amen. 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 I don't know what the population of this county is. I have no idea. Does anybody in here know, or at least approximate? Nine or 10, How many? About nine thousand. Nine thousand in the whole county. Hey. <laughs> hey. And growing back. <laughs> Lord, help us. I mean, I thought that was a small number myself. I thought that was a small one. But, I mean, think about it. Think about it. That's not, did you say nine or ten or whatever? I mean, it's, that's still that's still several thousand people yeah. that need some fire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, it's a given to know that most of them probably is not the least bit interested because they like a cold world. They like this world the way that it is and, right. and all of that. I want to tell you, there's some people out there getting hungry. There's right. some people out there getting thirsty. Yeah. There's some people out there that's realizing, you know what? There's got to be something better to life right. than me just spinning my wheels yeah. and going round and round yeah. and drinking and smoking dope and yeah. getting all of that yeah. in this life. Right. I want to tell you, they're looking, they're yeah. looking, they're looking. Yeah. They're and they're listening. Amen. The fact that for somebody to testify yeah. that there's fire, there's fire at yeah. the house of God. Amen. I promise you this, boys and everybody. Amen. Yeah. Listen, if there was fire, if this church caught on fire, God forbid. I'm talking about literally caught on fire. Every, all 9,000 probably in this county would hear about it before tomorrow morning. Right. And probably several of them would make their journey from wherever parts of the county they're at to come by and just see the remains. Mm -hmm. Right. You're right about that. But that's not the kind of fire I'm talking about. Right. The kind of fire is the fire that would fall on the altar, the fire yeah. that would fall upon the praise of God's people. Oh, Amen. Amen. Oh, look through the Bible. My 
goodness and how many things that God did when there was fire. Yeah. It was in a burning bush that God called Moses. Yeah. Yeah. What if it had just been a bush? It would never happen. Oh, if God gets in a bush. And by the way, that shows a little bit about his condescension. If the God of heaven, the God of glory, the God of eternity is willing to confine and, and, and bring himself and put himself into a, an old bramble bush, what would he do in your life and mine? What would he do in this church? Yes, sir. Right. He's with, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Hey, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, Jeremiah was going to quit, what, didn't he? Yeah. He done made up his mind, I'm done, I'm done, I'm not speaking anymore of this thing. But there was something going on on the inside. Right? He said, I won't speak anymore of this thing. But there was, amen, inside of me, there was a burning fire. Right? Yeah. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. And I could not stay. Yeah. I couldn't quit. Yeah. I couldn't lay it down. Yeah. I couldn't shut up. Why? Because on the inside, there right. was a burn. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We need that fire. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What about what about uh, what about Elijah on Mount Carmel when he called the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Jezebel's table up to Mount Carmel for a showdown? He said, "All right, here's the here's the way we're going to do it, boys. We're going to find out today who God, who is really God. Yeah, right. Build your altar." Get your sacrifice ready. Get everything ready. But it says this several times through that passage. But put no fire under. Get it ready. And put no fire under. Said that several times. Put no fire under. And then here's what the result was, or was going to be. The God that answers by fire. fire. Hey. Let him be God. Yes, sir. Hey. Hey, man, you know the story how that, my friend, the, the prophets of Baal, they prayed and cried and cut themselves and everything else. And, and, of course, Elijah just made fun of them. And maybe your God's gone on vacation or maybe he's asleep and all of that. Amen. Make a long story short, they prayed, 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 and Baal never answered because Baal was dead. Yeah, right. The God that answers by fire. Let him be God, but the God that don't answer by fire is not God. And Baal couldn't, couldn't answer. Hey. After it was over, you know the story. They prepared, repaired the altar and they got everything ready. And they even co covered it in a, in a famine. I mean, not a famine, but a uh, flood. Not, not a flood. When it's dry. A drought. Yeah. When it was a drought. There had been a three-year drought. Not even any dew. Right. Yeah. And now, now Elijah's saying, go get buckets and barrels of water. Yes, sir. And pour it all over the altar. Just soak it down. You know what he was wanting everything? He was wanting it to get to where it, no man could say, well, yeah, I've I seen that. Somebody just threw a little match over there on that side. They'll say God did it, but it really was a, it was a big lighter. No, Elijah said, soak it down good so no man will recognize uh, every man will recognize that if any fire comes on to this, it'll be divine fire. It'll be a heavenly fire. It'll be a fire that comes from God. And oh, yes, friend. After they've done that, made it completely impossible for man to do anything. Yeah. 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 Elijah bowed his head and prayed 63 words. Yeah. And guess what that, the next statement said? Mm -hmm. And the fire of the Lord fell. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And all them heathens, all of that whole crowd, they begin to say, the Lord, he is God. Amen. The Lord, he is God. Amen. I'm telling you, Mission Hill, you need the power and the fire Amen. of God. Amen. So the people will Amen. say, not, yes. oh, what a preacher. Amen. And oh, what a people. Amen. But oh, what a God. Amen. The Lord he is God. Amen. The Lord, he is God. Amen. Amen. Lord help us. Hey. When, when Jesus or when God was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness, guess what he did? What he was called a pillar of cloud, a cloud. We know that during the day. But guess what it was when it real dark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And guess what it was when it got real cold yeah. in the wilderness at night? What did they need? They needed God to be a pillar of fire. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sound ain't that good? Yes, <laughs> boy. Hey, Amen. We're going to get cold tonight, Daddy. I hear one of the little kids say. Boy, the temperature drops drastically out here in the wilderness. Yeah, but we serve a God that's a pillar of fire. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. I tell you what that pillar of fire also did. Great. Amen. When they were hemmed up at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was coming in on the rear yes. and had ill intents. Amen. Yes. They couldn't go to the right, to the left. Amen. It was the Red Sea in front, Pharaoh coming behind. Guess what that pillar of fire did? That pillar of fire, God moved around to the hinder part yes, and stood between Pharaoh's oh, army. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, yeah. And the people of God. The God of fire. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we need the fire of God. Amen. 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 Yeah. There were people designated. There were priests designated in the tabernacle yeah. for the sole purpose of keeping the fire burning. Right. Amen. Right. I wonder if somebody here at Mission Hill would hear the call of God. God wants me to keep the fire burning around the house of God. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. Amen. All we need I say it again. Paul wasn't starting the fire. Right. It was already kindled. It was already started. It wasn't big, but it was already started. And Paul, even though he was cold, just like the rest, even though Paul had just swam or was on boards or broken pieces, amen, and came out of that and escaped. Verse 1 uses the word escaped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's preaching in that word. But I'll <coughs> move on past that tonight. But then the apostle Paul, Instead of going up, and you know, he was probably leading. He was probably out front of the 276. You know what that meant, Brother Chris? He could have been the first one to the fire. That's right. You're up. He could have been getting warm. Right. He could have been getting some comfort. Yeah. He could have been getting some help. Yes, sir. But a real Christian That's right. is not selfish. A real Christian is not thinking about, well, I'm, I, I'm a next to the fire. I don't know about the rest of the church, but I'm next to the fire. No, Paul denied himself, and that's a good way to put it. Paul denied himself, and again, even in his chilled and cold condition, he went around and started gathering sticks. Amen. He began, amen. Yeah. That being on an island. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'd say finding a stick was probably pretty hard. When they heat with sticks, they cook with sticks. Probably hard. Right. Probably hard to find. I don't think there was just a big pile of them right here. Come on, boy. Everybody right here. We got enough right here. No, I'd say there's one here, one over there, yeah. one over here, yes, and one over there. Right. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> Christians are not just not, they're not selfish to go for it themselves, but they're also, they, they're, they're willing to sacrifice and they're willing to, they're willing to labor. To serve. Amen. Well, I don't know. We'd like to have revival if it come easy. If it come, listen. Here's your good. Here's your good. Here's your good statement. If it's easy, God's probably not in. That's true. You're right. right. Sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Are we? Are, uh, and, and, ain't that right, preacher? Yes, hey, man. <laughs> oh, if it's easy, if it's easy, and, and brother Ryan, I'll tell you, that's what I like. I want that easy. Yeah. I want the smooth. Now, I'm going to tell you that smooth and easy, and that, amen, that'll never make you to be what you're supposed to be. Right. I'll tell you what it'll make you is a spoiled brat, amen. Right. It'll cause you to be so used to the comfortable and the easy right. that when a smallest little trial comes, a small little bad report, amen, or a negative phone call, or somebody gets upset and walks off and leaves you, yeah. your world will crumble. Right. But if you've been through a few things, Are y'all listening? Yes, sir. Paul, Lord only knows what he had already been through. I think probably by this chapter, Paul's already been beat and left outside for, to, for dead. Yeah. You think that a little storm's going to bother Paul when he's already 
He's already went through all of that. You're right, preacher. That's good. You know what our problem is? We ain't went through a whole lot. Right. Right. We've not been through much. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. When negative things comes in our life, first thing comes in our mind. Why me? Yeah. Right. Why now? Why this? Right. I can't believe this is happening to me. Well, why not? Right. Amen. Is the servant better than the Lord? Right. We're following him. If you follow him, guess what? The world will treat you like they did him. And here's your good point. The closer that Jesus got to, to being glorified, the closer he got to being crucified. Right. <laughs> Y'all just write that down. Yeah. Stay yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey Amen. That's good. We are in perilous days. Nobody in here would debate that. We're seeing things we never thought we would see. We're living in an America that doesn't hardly even resemble the America of right. five years ago or three right. years ago. You're right. Even two years ago. Right. That shows you how flimsy this country is. And I'm a patriot. I'm a patriot of this country. I love the red, white, and blue. Yeah. I think they ought, to come, they ought to throw every sports star off of the team forever yeah. without right. a dime yeah. of compensation if they kneel down yes, and sir. for the right. national anthem. Right. 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 That's exactly that. Yes, I wanted to get off that. I felt my blood pressure going up. Hey. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, but none of us ever thought we'd see it. Listen, man, friend, you better, you better be finding out how to build the fire bigger. Yeah. That's what Paul is saying. You know what? The day we're living in, we don't need a, just a fire. We don't need a small fire. We don't need just to sustain the fire. We need a bigger fire. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask your pastor something. This is not, he didn't know what I was going to preach tonight, but I said a word to him. I'm going to put him on the spot. Yeah. Everybody can see your pastor. Is the fire of Mission Hill Baptist Church big enough to do what God wants to do in this county? You shouldn't have to study on that much. <laughs> it is big enough? The fire you got now is big enough? I'm going to have to use somebody else for illustration. <laughs> Why are you having revival if your fire is big enough? <laughs> hey, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> I watched him eat today. That's what his problem is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let me ask you, Mission Hill, how many members we got in Mission Hill right here? You come here, whether you're a member or not, you come here. Do you think that you've got a, the fire, the spiritual fire of your church is big enough to meet the needs of the crowd that's in this country, uh, in this area? That's right. Everybody back through there, you didn't turn around, but everybody back through there is going, it's not big enough. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. You know what that ought to cause you to do? It ought to cause you to start looking and start gathering sticks. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and you know where those sticks probably come from? The storm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. That storm that almost sunk this, well, did finally break up the ship and looked like it was going to kill all of them 276 plus the Apostle. <laughs> the Apostle Paul. Paul's one that even said the hope that it looked like all hope that we should be saved was taken away. We haven't seen sun, uh, stars, and moon in many days. Been total darkness, total uh, un, un, listen, unparalleled storm for fourteen days. Remember? Oh my! We've all heard preaching out of that chapter. But while that ship is being thrown about like a rag doll in that storm, God was over here. Knowing what the next chapter is going to be. <laughs> and God, amen, and God was taken. And their limbs was falling out. Yeah. My servants going to need them limbs. Yeah. Hey amen. 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 God went to another tree, amen, and let the storm shake some limbs out. Yes, knowing sir. that God's man. Yes. Listen, if there's a fire needed, there's limbs. Amen. There's sticks, amen. amen. You don't have to worry. Their God will never need a, a fire and not furnish the kindling amen. and not right. furnish the stick. Amen. You just have to go hunt for them. Uh, amen. 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 You ought to make sure when you show up on Sunday morning that you got a big bundle of sticks under your arm. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Hey, man, preacher, I don't know if the old people would like to do this or not. And I'm not telling them to. But it probably wouldn't hurt at all. Maybe right up over here. Sunday morning, everybody bring a stick with you. Hey. Everybody bring you two or three sticks with you. And just put them out. Just put them right up under there. Mm. And every time you come in here, you'll be reminded. We don't need to start the fire. Revival's it's already started. I've been here two nights. I can tell it's already started. The fire's already started. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness of Mr. Hill? Fire's already started. Amen. No doubt about it. Fire has already started. You don't yes. want to keep it the size that it is. You don't want to bring sticks to keep it the size that it is. You want to supersize it. Yes, sir. Amen. Woo! Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. God deliver anybody from eating at McDonald's. But I want to tell you, eating at McDonald's has got the supersized thing. They want you to ask if you want to supersize it. Where's that bird? McDonald's. McDonald's. I hate that place. <laughs> <laughs> but when they go through the drive through or they go to the counter and they place an order, I want this and this and this and that and whatever. And then they'll say, sometimes they get asked, do you want to supersize that? Or they'll just come out and say, hey, supersize that. You know what that's telling that, that person that's taking your order? It's not regular. It's not big enough. Right. Yeah. Regular's right. not big enough. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. not big enough. Oh, we need it super yeah. size. Yeah. Hey. 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 Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Right. Right. Lord help us. I'm not even getting started. <laughs> Some of you wiping your brow. I said, oh, under God. <laughs> Let me give you something to think about. I'm, I'm going to be through. So, preacher, what are you saying? Shortly after, ever how many minutes I've been up here, you're not asking. Surely, what are you, what are you saying? <laughs> These are simple little truths. If you're going to have a, if you're going to have, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to preach on building the blaze bigger. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul's doing. Supersizing, superstructing the fire. Small, no fire definitely won't work. No fire does nothing. Little fire will only do little. If you want big things, go big with your fire. Go big with your Amen. fire. Yes, sir. Hey, and you can. And we must. But the first thing that, should, that sticks out to me, somebody has got to get in Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. And we don't know of one of the 276 that picked up the first twig, much less a stick. The only one that we see active was the Apostle Paul. God's man. Yes, sir. I know you're glad to have a pastor that'll come in here and amen, he's come in here with his arms, spiritually speaking, his arms full of biblical sticks, amen, that he's been studying and is going to preach and put on the fire. Right. Yeah. You're glad he's doing it? Yeah. What if those 276 would said, hey, man of God, we'll hit More of the merrier. More than there. Instead of waiting on the man of God to walk around and find, and that was at night too, and pick up sticks. Everybody get involved. Everybody at Mission Hill. Every young person get involved. Every elder person get involved. Every mama, every daddy, every brother, sister, son, daughter. Amen. Everybody, 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 everybody. everybody. Amen. Start hunting sticks through the week in your prayer closet. Right. Amen. 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 Come to the house of God Amen. on Sunday morning. Yes. Amen. No telling what happened. Yes, sir. But please, if I could admonish you on this thing about being interested. Make sure your preacher's not the only one picking up sticks. Because I know a lot of preachers now that have gotten so weary with feeling like they're having to do it alone that many of them are walking away from their pulpit. I don't know if you're aware of it or not. Brother Chris, I'm certain, is aware of it. There's churches everywhere with no preacher. And no one, no, no preacher to be found. Right. Right. I get calls, brother. I get calls regular. 
Preacher, can you recommend us a, a preacher? Do you know anybody? You hear what I'm having to tell them? I know a lot of preachers, but I don't know any that I'd send. Wow. And then, then the other part of that equation is, I wouldn't send a man if I knew it to a church that's been had a history of, of, of slaughtering God's men. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't send him. I wouldn't send him. Yes, sir. Amen. You said your son-in-law fills in a lot. Is this the one? This dear brother right here stays booked up a lot just preaching in churches over, over in Robbinsville in that area and this area, I guess. Yes, sir. Just churches that don't have preachers. You stay busy. Yes, sir. Pretty busy. Just preaching, filling in. For churches, listen, I'm not talking about in China. I'm not talking about in, in, in other countries. I'm not even talking about in California. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about right here in a neighboring county. Yep. What's the name of that county? Graham. Graham County. Is that the Robbinsville Black Knight? Hey. Brother, they need God. Hey. Hey. Last football game I ever played was against the Robbinsville hey. Black Knight. And I'm not bitter. Hey. They about killed me on opening kickoff. Hey, Amen. About took my head off, literally. But I'm not bitter. Yeah. They need God over there. Preach on us. Yes, Amen. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? Right here's one right here that stays busy preaching every week in churches that don't have a preacher. Yeah, right. They're everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. And and listen, and most preach a lot of preachers that I talk to that haven't left, they're talking it. They they haven't left, but they're thinking. The stress level is out the roof. Because every man of God, a real man of God, takes the condition of his church personally. Amen, right? yes, and they'll start thinking this right here. And church, you better make sure your preacher don't think this. Maybe if they had another preacher, maybe they'd be doing better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what's going to be the end result of that. He is fixing to depart. Yeah. And I'm not pointing at him because he had not said that. But I'm just saying I know men like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. When they start talking that way, well, maybe... Maybe, you know, maybe if they had a better pastor, maybe, you know, maybe, and start that maybe stuff. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Maybe, if I was gone, maybe they'd do better. Maybe get another man in here, whatever. Are y'all listening? Yeah. It's happening. Amen. The yeah. stress level, the pressure is beyond compare. And listen, I'm going to tell you something, church. Please pay attention to your preacher right. if he's struggling or not. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Don't let him fight alone. Yes, sir. Don't let him be the only one picking up sticks. Yes, sir. Don't let him and his family be the only ones picking up sticks. I'm not saying that he is, but make sure he's fine. Amen. You see him struggling on Sunday morning, go to bat for him. Amen. Say amen. 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 Preach, man of God. When he gets up off of his pew, is this where you sit normally? When he gets up off his pew and he's making his way to the pulpit, he ought to hear it coming from the pew. Yes, sir. Read, preacher. That's this is biblical. Bring us the book. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Bring us the book. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You ought to say it in light of the message tonight. My fire's not big enough, preacher. Amen. All that wood you've been studying this week, dump it on me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it might smoke for a little bit, but it might be a while. Thank God the breeze of the Holy Ghost yeah. will cause it to blaze. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, we need to be on the blaze for yeah. Peter. <laughs> but if you're set, but anyway, you got to be interested. Somebody's got to be interested. I told yeah. you I wasn't going to preach all the money. Not only somebody got to be interested, somebody's got to get involved. Yeah. And I've already been preaching on that, so I don't have to re redo that. Somebody's got to get involved. The preacher was involved, but none of the people were involved. As far as picking up sticks. Amen. That's what we pay him to do. Y'all don't want me to get on that. And a lot of a lot of churches, and I'm sure this was not one of them, but there's a lot of churches who looks at their man of God as a hirely paid servant. That's what we pay you to do, preacher. No, you don't pay him to do nothing. Right. Say amen right. Right. You honor him. You right. take care of him. Yes. You try to relieve the, 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 the needs in his life amen. so that he's not burdened down with, right. with concern and yes. things financially and so forth right. so he can focus. Yes. 
focus on prayer and the ministry of the Word. Right. Yes, and you have a man like that. Hey, I've known the pastor for many years. We supported him when he was a missionary. Our church did. Amen. I've known him, brother. He is God's man. Yes, you know that. You're right. You know that. Yes. Lot, listen, I'm going to line on that. But you better make, listen, it's a lot easier to keep one than it is to go out here and try to find one. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody's got to get interested. Somebody's got to get involved. Amen. Somebody's got to get involved. <laughs> got to be interested in the fire getting bigger around here. You gotta get interested in the fire getting bigger in your own heart. Yeah. Hey, mamas, daddies, you gotta be interested in the fire getting bigger at your house. You're not gonna be concerned about it getting bigger at this house, the house of God, if it's not you're concerned about it being big at your house. Right. Amen. Somebody's gotta get involved. Thirdly, somebody's gotta view it as imperative. That is, it's it's not optional. If a big blaze is optional, you'll never pick up a stick. But if it's essential, you'll be the best one yet. You'll lead the way. Amen. And it wasn't just for the 276. That same rain and cold, all of them barbarians was in that same weather. Right. Same cold, same rain, needing fire as well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And they're watching. And guess what? I know this is all, everybody's heard this. Everybody's heard this. The one that is picking up the sticks, that's the one the snake bit. Right. That's why a lot of people don't want to pick up sticks. They're too afraid of snakes. Yes, sir. And watch this, Brother Chris. You know this. Everybody in here, you've heard this. This is not me. When the, when the fire had just been kindled, the snake liked that. The snake likes a small fire. Right. The snake don't even like no fire. Oh, mercy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the snake, the serpent, the viper, it, he don't even like no fire. But if that fire is little, it's not, a, it's not enough to hurt him. It's just enough to comfort him. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. Reckon there's any resemblance to that thought right there to the lukewarmness of Laodicea? Right. Neither hot nor cold, just right. Just right. The service is all I like. I like that lukewarm temperature. I like it. I like it. Most churches are there. But here comes a fire breathing man of God. Amen. <laughs> So he come out through there, brother. He, he recognized that fire's not big enough. And he started gathering sticks. And he come over there with arm loads and dumped it on there. And guess what happened? The fire started getting big. And it started getting too big for the yeah. serpent. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the serpent, the viper, comes out of the fire. Yeah. And bit the one that's making the fire bigger. Yeah. 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 Brother Ronnie Simpson preached one time on when the fire burns, snakes crawl. Mm -hmm. oh. This church gets on fire for God, you can count on it. Yeah. There's going to be somebody that's going to get sideways. Somebody's going to get crossed up. Right. Somebody's going to fall out. Somebody's going to get their little feet in touch. Right. Right. You're right. I told our church Sunday, I said, listen, I am fresh out and forever will be out of pacifier. Hey, I mean, burning, don't call me. Hey. That's exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Yes, sir. Amen. I said, I'm sick of this babyishness. The largest Sunday school class in most churches should be held upstairs <laughs> where the, most of the adults are. Because. Immaturity. I'm going to tell you, immaturity has done more damage than immorality has to church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God help us. Anyway, are you satisfied with the level of the fire of your own self? No. You want to look at it first, personally. Is the fire big enough in my own heart? Am I, am I, am I content with how much on fire for God I am? Because if you're content, that's as far as it'll ever go. You may put some sticks on it, but it'll only to keep it the way that it is. Yeah. <laughs> but 
God help us to have that attitude that Paul had. Not big enough. Yes, sir. It's not big enough. I look around and I see the need is massive. The need is massive. If you look around in this county and look around in our in your state and look around in this country, the need is massive. Yes, sir. Amen. But it's hard to find a church that's on fire. It's hard to find a preacher that's on fire. It's hard to find a mama that's on fire, a daddy that's on fire. It's listen, it's even far more harder to find young people. Right. Yeah. I'm going to make this statement. I'm done. Listen to this. And Brother Chris, you've been at our church. My young people helps me carry the spiritual load of our church. And I said that exactly right. Amen. My young people are some of my greatest prayer warriors. Mm. Amen. That's right. Amen. Some of my greatest servants, not serving me, but serving God, Amen. is my young people. Amen. Can I wait, can, preacher, can I make one more statement? You, I want you to listen. Try to learn more. I don't have a Bible verse, what I'm about to say. I won't make that clear. <coughs> but every revival that I've ever read about, every revival that I've read about, the one I got saved in back in 1981 that went seven weeks and there's people serving God today that got saved in that meeting. I was the first one to get saved, first one to surrender to preach. And that revival. And that's been 40 years ago. Now, boy, young people, I want you to listen up. I want you to listen clear. Clear. Every revival was either started by young people or was sustained by young people, or both. Now, I don't have a verse for that, but if that's a pattern, if that is a pattern, I wonder what young person has the key to God moving Amen. in this church and through this church. Yeah. Good. I don't know of a revival ever. I've never, I don't know of a revival ever where God bypassed the young people. I've never known it. Never. God's moving at Tabernacle in Greenville, South Carolina, where Dr. Seidler used to, he started that church years ago, many years ago. He's in heaven now. God's been moving down there probably for two, two and a half months. And guess who he's moving in and moving on? Young people. For the Aldridge that was here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, he told me, he said, Preacher, when he was heading home, uh, or no, he'd already, he drove home for, uh, Wednesday night. He was telling, called me on Thursday. He called me on Thursday, and, he, and I was on my way here. He said, Preacher, God's moving on our young people like I've never seen. They came to our, our youth camp, and God moved in them. And he said, Preacher, it's went to another level. He said, I've got, we've got young people that's fasting and praying Amen. over the lost kids in the church that they'll be saved. God's a moving. God's using the young people. He said, Preacher, he, he, he told me this. He said, when, when the young people come home from camp and they were fired up, on fire for the Lord, he said, I watched mamas and daddies start getting right with God. Mm -hmm. Mamas and daddies said, I want what my, my daughter's got. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. They get in the car when they picked them up at church and they're just 100 miles a minute telling what God did, what God did, what God did. And it, and it showed mom and daddy a little cold. Yeah. Yeah. One of them, he said, he said, one of the ladies, young ladies in his church, teenager, he said the daddy was walking down the hallway, 11 o'clock at night, walking down the hallway, and he heard her, and he walked by, and there she lay in the bathroom floor, calling on God, 11 o'clock at night. Amen. I wonder what young person, I wonder what mom, I wonder what daddy, Lord, I want to. I don't want to miss coast. I don't want to. I don't want to coast. I want to. I want to be on fire. I want to be on fire at the job. I want to be on fire in my community. I want to be on fire in my home. I want to be on fire in the Sunday school class. I want to be on fire in the choir. Oh, I want to be on fire. Amen. Amen. Father, we come in Jesus' name. I pray you take the message tonight. Use it, Lord, as you see fit. Lord, I thank you for burning my heart with this message this morning in prayer. Lord, as we try to pray and prepare throughout the day for the service tonight. 
Lord, I pray you'll speak to hearts. Lord, it's time that we recognize no fire is not an option. Little fire is not an option. The only thing good about a little fire is that we, it's already started. And it's a lot easier to build it. It's a lot easier to make it a big fire when it's already started. There may be some in here, even though they've been in this meeting all week long, the fire hadn't really even got started yet. Lord, may they get in this altar tonight. So, Lord, I want that fire to not just start. I don't want to be content with it just being started and kindled. But, Lord, I want to put some big logs on it. God, I want, I want to build it big. I want to build it big. And fire will burn. It don't matter how cold it is. Fire will burn. It don't matter how dark it is. Fire will burn. Fire will burn here in North Carolina as easily as it will in China or Germany. Or Russia, it doesn't matter. Location is not the deciding factor on whether a fire will burn. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that you'll stir every every day in this place, the spiritual leader of their home, if they find themselves in an old-fashioned altar, say, oh God, help me to be the leader. Let Help me to be showing the example of picking up sticks and making a fire. Help little Junior and Sissy that save in your grace, Lord. Help them to realize that, Lord, you saved me for a purpose. Lord, I will be on fire. Lord, I pray you let the spirit of prayer fall on me at Mission Hill Baptist Church. Lord, I pray in your Father that you would move in power and demonstration upon every man, woman, boy, and girl. Those church members that never came or have been here this week or has missed most of the week when they come in here on Sunday morning, Lord, may they be made aware of real quickly. This church is different than it was last Sunday. This church is on fire. This church is committed to gathering sticks through the week of preparation and prayer and devotion and intimacy with God and worship and loving Jesus and being a witness and cleaning up their life. They're not bringing dirt to throw on the fire. They're not bringing that. They're not wet, bringing wet blankets to throw on the fire. They're bringing that which is combustible. They're bringing that which will burn. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you'll take and do a word tonight. And I want the same for our church. I want the same for our church, Lord. And we need it. I don't want to be content with the level of fire that we have. I don't want to be content with that. It's not big enough. It's not big enough, Lord. It's not big enough, Lord, for us to carry out your overall purpose for us, even in our town. It's not big enough, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. If we contain it, if we can contain it, it's not big enough. When it gets big enough for you to use, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. Lord, I know some folk from Calvary is here tonight. Lord, may they want it tonight. Lord, may they want it with all of their hearts. Oh, God, that fire's not big enough. Lord, we're not talking crowd size, but the fire, our fire is not big enough. And it don't take but one to start a big fire. One match can start a big fire. Lord, please help us tonight. Lord, I don't know, other churches may re be represented, but may they want that as well. Stir the, stir the pastor. Stir his family. Lord, they want the fire to get bigger and bigger. Bigger. The only way to get bigger is not set back and wish it would. Not set back and wish somebody would do something. The only way for a fire to get bigger is to fuel it. Fuel it. Feed it. And surrender and submission and obedience. And fuel that fire. And there's no telling where the fire has <coughs> been started and kindled. And even have some sticks put on it this week. No tell them where it'll be next week or the week after or next month. And it don't matter. Fire burning's not a political thing. Congress don't have to meet about it. All it needs is individuals putting some sticks on the fire. Saying, I hate the coldness. I want the fire, but I hate the coldness. If we're okay with the coldness, we'll never gather sticks. 
Lord, if we're okay with the darkness, we'll never, never gather sticks. Have your way, Jesus. While she's playing, Pastor.